Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar, and it is that time of year again. I am here in Geneva, Switzerland. It is Watches and Wonders, and we're going to talk about new Rolex models in this video. Quick drive-by here, not intended to make this a deep dive review because this is just one hour after all these have released. Let's dive into what you should know. And also before we jump into you want to stay up to date on all new releases for watches and wonders definitely follow on instagram we're going to be posting live photos from the event and also have some articles on our site teddybaldasar.com so now to kick it off let's start with some of the models that i think you guys will be interested in the most this is not necessarily a huge change other than the case size and here we have the new rolex explorer now available in 40 millimeters we recently saw the shift back to 36 millimeters and with that 39 millimeter was no longer available. So it was probably something that they thought about beforehand, even when unveiling that 36 millimeter, that they had some intention behind bringing something like this to the market. 40 millimeters seems like a great size to pair with the 36. I think this is a great option. 3230 movement on the inside, twin lock crown system, and an oyster lock folding clasp. As of right now, the 36 millimeter is still available on the site, so don't be worried for those that do love the 36 millimeter case size. Moving right along, we have some new Rolex Daytonas, and to celebrate 60 years. This was one that kind of surprised me, to be honest. I think maybe something was gonna come from the Daytona, but to see a whole new lineup and what they've done with the uh, exhibition case back on the Platinum model, pretty interesting. So to begin, 40 millimeter case, and a new movement on the inside, this is the 4131, has their proprietary escapement, Paraflex shock absorbers, and a new oscillating weight with optimized ball bearing, 72 hour power reserve, and as I mentioned, on the version in Platinum, you're also getting an oscillating weight made from 18 karat gold, and it is visible when you flip this watch around. That's not something you typically see with Rolex, and it's not gonna be the last time we're gonna be talking about that subject in this video. And one other point to mention is going to be some redesign with the case itself, and specifically with the bezel. You'll see that steel perimeter on the outside to match the case. Next up, we have a new Yacht Master in titanium. This comes in with 42 millimeter case with the 3235 movement on the inside. Probably no surprise that we're seeing more titanium from Rolex after the deep sea challenge. It was really only a matter of time. This grade five titanium alloy reduces the weight compared to steel models by about 30%. Satin finish on the case. This dial is called intense black that we're showcasing here. Comes with an oyster bracelet and ceramic bezel. Moving to the GMT Master 2 family, we did get two new variations here coming with some gold variety. Just to break these down, you have one in yellow gold and the other in two tone on a Jubilee, and you also have a ceramic bezel in solid black and gray. And just to create some design cohesion, you also are going to get some gold tone with that GMT hand to match. Also, the Rolex Skydweller got some updates when it comes to case material, as well as some new dial colors. General case size is going to remain the same at 42 millimeters, but you also are getting a new movement on the inside. This is the extension of the 9001. Now we have the 9002. You have an 18 karat white gold on a bright black dial paired with an Oyster Flex bracelet, Oyster clasp, and glide lock. You have a mint green stainless steel with the white gold bezel, and then a blue green dial with an Ever Rose gold case. From a couple days ago, we saw that Rolex teaser video where you saw the side of this bezel and it looked very Cellini-like. So everybody was assuming probably a new Cellini, but we didn't actually get that. We actually have a new model known as the 1908. So this is in reference to the year in which Rolex was trademarked as a name. And to be honest, if I had to pick any model within this entire lineup that probably was the most interesting, probably was this one, because this is a new territory for Rolex in many ways. These come in with a 39 millimeter case and a design that really does pull from the Cellini, but has its own defined characteristics. You have a redesigned hand design with that hollow lollipop hour hand, sub seconds at six, a more restrained fluted bezel with also some partial doming happening on that bezel as well. On the inside, we get the 7140 caliber. This is a new automatic caliber from Rolex, superlative chronometer, Exhibition case back, and the movement does look quite well done. Cote de Genève finish, beveling on the bridge edges, 66 hour power reserve, and an 18 karat yellow gold rotor to go along with it. And for those that say that Rolex likes to play it safe, well, you have some pretty avant-garde options here coming next. One being a Oyster Perpetual model known as the Celebration. This basically just has a lacquered tile with all of these different bubbles on it. It's available in a 31, a 36, and a 41 millimeter option. Depending on the case size, we'll determine what what movement is going to be inside. You either have the 2232 or the 3230. These are incredibly playful and although probably not gonna be for most people watching, interesting release from Rolex. And then you also will have some new Rolex Day-Date options. An 18 karat Everose gold with a green adventuring dial. Then you have an 18 karat yellow gold option with this orangish dial. Then you have a platinum turquoise. These have 52 brilliant cut diamonds on them. And then also you have these different puzzle dial options, which 
at the time of recording this, don't really have that much information on these, but out there, especially for Rolex Standard. One more thing, guys, before we wrap up this video, we were editing this and we just recognized that Rolex also seems to have discontinued the Rolex Milgauss. There's a lot of speculation about that being one of the new models for this year, but we didn't get it. And in addition to that, we no longer have the Milgauss. So maybe something to look forward to in the future, but Bad news today, no more Milgauss. So I did want to mention that also before we finish up this video as well. But all right, guys, that's the roundup here of some of the new Rolex releases for 2023 for Watches and Wonders. What do you think? Did they do a good job? Did they not do a good job? If I had to pick my personal favorite, I would probably go for either the 1908, and I do like the developments with the Daytona in terms of that new movement. Also getting some exhibition case backs here. That 1908, I think, though, is totally out of left field. I know that's not going to be the mover for this entire lineup, but if you're talking about maybe shifting from the typical Rolex that we know, that's probably the biggest change that we've seen from this year. But if you like the video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, hit the bell icon. More content will be coming this week, so you definitely want to stay tuned for future content. Make sure you're subscribed so you can stay up to date with all the new releases from the industry. Definitely check out teddybaldosai.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.